Hi, I'm Stefan Papadakis. We're here at Papadakis Racing in Hawthorne, California. I'm standing in front of a thousand horsepower, four cylinder Toyota engine. We're gonna take it apart, inspect it, and we'll show you what we're looking for uh, before we do a rebuild. So this engine I think actually had a head gasket issue and you can see some condensation on the cams uh, like some of you know water was condensating inside here and this retainer doesn't look super healthy yeah it's definitely good we pulled this thing apart it's probably some stuff to look at in here factory it has a variable intake cam and variable exhaust. We still use the intake, uh, but we actually lock out the exhaust. We have a lot of issues on exhaust valve float and like rocker arms and stuff like that falling off. Uh, so we want to try to minimize the harmonics there. So we actually locked out the exhaust. The intake's good for about 70 horsepower actually down low uh, by, by advancing the intake cam. And the exhaust is probably only good for about 10 or so. Um, so that's why we're not so worried about not using that one. And it's all held by, down by the silicone, so once I get it loose, it's gonna pop, pops up. It's always a scary part because of the, uh, you know, the valve springs are so st stiff in this, and then this whole assembly, and you're always scared you're gonna break like a cam or like the, the girdle or something like that. I've actually had one break, but that was one of the other guys pulling it apart, not me. I guess you could, all the blown motors are probably my fault though. So I'm gonna go ahead and number all of the rocker arms so I know where they came from. Um, and then these rockers are actually all custom. And the stock rockers have an issue where at high RPM, like over 7,000, they'll sort of fall off because the cam is on top of the rocker and then the rocker you know, is on the lifter and the valve. And at high RPM, if the valve floats at all, the rocker will literally, literally just fall off. Um, so these have a deeper groove. Uh, so they, they hold the, the valve tip more and then uh, instead of a hydraulic lifter, it's actually a solid lifter. Um, in addition to that, uh, we go to a larger stem valve. So instead of the 5.5 millimeter valve stock, we run a six millimeter stem valve on the intake and a seven millimeter on the exhaust. Uh, we have to go all the way up to seven millimeter on the exhaust because of the really high cylinder pressures and the really high exhaust temps. It'll actually bend the exhaust valves if they're too small. Uh, but now that we've upgraded to the larger stems and all the Supertech valve train, uh, then it works really well. So these are torqued actually really high. We will torque them somewhere between 145 to 165 foot pounds. Um, and they're half inch ARP custom 625 studs. It's pretty gnarly custom stud. Uh, the issue with these engines is always the head gasket. That's the weak link. And we've gotten to the point now where we're not worried about stretching studs. We actually yield the head. The head will actually flex up. So we're working on fixing that problem, but that's, uh, uh, <laughs> that's still in the works. At this point, the head's off. We're gonna inspect it a little bit. And uh, we thought there might be a little bit of a head gasket issue with it, um, but everything actually here looks pretty good. Um, so I'll actually end up taking it to our, our cylinder head guy at Portflow, and then uh, he'll disassemble it, um, check all the valve seats, look at it. We can actually look at that today. Uh, and then redo like a skim cut, like just to clean up, which should take probably three or four thousands. On the exhaust side, you can see some of the what looks like some oil running out of, of the valve guide area. So it looks like there might be a valve steel uh, leakage issue, um, which is also contributing a bit to probably the oil on top of the pistons. So as I'm taking out the valve spring um, and the valve, I'll look at a couple of things. Uh, one is 
when I go and, and take the, the spring compressor is if it really pops hard, right? Or is it just pretty smooth? Because the keepers like really try to stick themselves into the retainer. That's a telltale sign that you have some uh, issues probably with the wear in the retainer. Uh, this one came apart pretty easily there. And I'll actually look into the taper, like the bore of the retainer. And this one's titanium and I can still see some of the machine marks there. So I know that we don't have any like um, wear issues in that area. And I'll also look at the, the outside of the keepers and uh, does these look good as well. It looks like the main issue that we had was not enough clearance on the rocker arm and that's where the uh, this wear is happening on the top of the retainer. So we'll have to replace the retainers and we'll clearance the rockers a little bit. Uh, but as far as the build goes um, on the on the keeper and everything that looks fine. Another thing I'll look at on the valve I'll look at a couple areas. I'll look at the stem and see if it looks like it's no wearing normal and then I'll also look at the seat to see if there's a pretty consistent uh, sealing area and that there's not like high spots or low spots or any kind of like pock marks or like dark areas where it might not actually be, be touching. Um, those are signs that you either uh, some dirt went through there or that your valve's bent a little bit. This one I pulled out looks pretty good uh, but we'll have to go through all of them. So this crankshaft is actually a, a modified factory Toyota one. Uh, we use the factory main journals, but then the raw journals are turned down and widened a little bit so we can run a two inch pin uh, Chevy rod bearing. Um, the rod bearings did look pretty beat up. I think that at some point maybe it ran a little bit low on oil, starving for oil, like maybe on the bank of the track or um, some probably really high oil temperatures. So we can see a little bit of heat on the crank. So the crank will go back to our crankshaft guy Castillo who did the modifications and he'll check it, make sure it's in within spec and make sure it's not bent at all. Uh, if it is, they can actually bend it back. And then he'll polish up the journals and make sure that they're uh, shiny within spec and ready to be reassembled. So this is the piston and rod we use. It's a JE forged piston, uh, basically custom to our spec. Um, we run a pretty standard ring pack. It's a 2.8, 2.8, 4.0. Um, that's the thickness of the rings. And then we run a 200 thou thick pin. It's actually a really buff pin uh, because of the power that we make. It's like close to 250 horsepower per cylinder. Uh, we've actually bent thinner pins. So this is something we, we run so it's really robust. Um, and then a custom rod. Uh, the rod bearings are actually ACL bearings that Calico modifies for us because typically these are for a small block Chevy where they have like the sistered rods. So they're only chamfered on one side. Uh, they chamfer the other side and, and narrow it for our, our, uh, our application. What I'm gonna look for as I inspect this, this piston rod bearing combo is, I'll look at the top of the piston to make sure, uh, see if there's any kind of detonation or any kind of maybe part came through here. Um, in addition to that, I'll sort of spin the rings and see if they spin properly and, and make sure none of the ring lands have, have crushed down or make sure that's all good. And I'll also look really close at where the ring gap is and see if there's any signs of budding. The budding is basically if you didn't have your piston ring end gap big enough and everything heated up and they touched each other, which is really bad. So that's how we do a teardown and inspection here at Papadakis Racing. We believe if you want to be a championship level team, this is something you need to do a few times a year.